Paul. But what people miss with those verses are, God said, those who have a willing heart to give. Mm -hmm. That's all good as God is looking for, is a willing heart. Amen? I guarantee you, if you give God your heart, and you're willing to say, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know where you want me to go. I don't know what you want me to accomplish this week. But Lord, I have a willing heart. Wow! Mm -hmm. Just think what God will do with you this week. Listen, there are going to be some losses, voluntary losses, involuntary losses. For time's sake, you know, Acts chapter 7, there was a loss of life when the first deacon was stoned to death. Acts chapter 8, Peter was in prison. Acts chapter 14 was stoned. Acts chapter 16 was beaten. And then in Acts chapter uh, 28, verse 22, there was a general disrespect for the church. That, that there is involuntary losses. There are just some things that are going to happen, amen? <clears throat> the key is, is that when it happens, that we still have the same mind, one accord, loving each other, stressing Christ, evangelizing, amen? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I think sometimes today the church gets their wrong priority. They think it's, you know, they think it's the carpets on the floor and glass stained windows and a beautiful building. And that's what they keep their eye on. Nah. The biggest building, most beautiful church building in the world could not contain God. Amen. Because God doesn't live in buildings. Amen. He lives in human beings. Amen. He lives in the born-again believer. And so, we're going to endure some losses. And when that happens, what should be our attitude? We'll praise the Lord. We're going to go forward anyway. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they stressed Christ. They demonstrated it by the preaching of the cross. They practiced evangelism. They demonstrated it by how? They went to their town and filled the towns with their doctrine. They were witnessing. Number three, there, because of that, there were some voluntary losses. There were some sacrifices that had to be made uh, so that the gospel could be carried out and the church could go forward. There were some involuntary losses. Where there, because of that, there was persecution. There was hard time. Some died. Some did not. God spread the whole church throughout the entire region with persecution so that this gospel could go out. Amen? And then lastly, notice they faithfully proclaimed Christ. They faithfully proclaimed Christ. They kept on preaching in spite of the imprisonment, the threats, and the losses. Notice Acts chapter 4. And verse number 20, Acts chapter 4, verse 20, the Bible says, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and what? You know, the townspeople and the religious people, they wanted to shut them down. They wanted to stop the church. They wanted to stop the gospel. But Peter said, no, we're going to faithfully proclaim Christ no matter what you say. We cannot help but speak. Amen. Speak the things which we have seen and heard. Seen Christ, heard what he preached, the ministry of Christ, the resurrection, the whole gospel message. We've seen it with our own eyes, how people can change by being saved, by being born again. Amen? And we're not going to stop that. You know, think for a minute. What would it take to stop Bethlehem Baptist Fellowship, or to stop us as individual Christians from talking about Christ. What would it take? Death. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Think about that. So, you know what you can watch out for this week in your Christian walk? You don't think, <laughs> you don't think Satan's going to throw an arrow mm -hmm. to try to get you to stop witnessing? to try to get you from stop proclaiming Christ, mm -hmm. to try to get you to quit and say, that, you know, I'm tired of this Christianity. What's the sense of talking about Christ? What's it get me? Beat up. Beat up. <laughs> you know? 
He'll throw, he'll throw it. Those arrows will come, you know. I was meditating this week, and I was thinking, I tell you, the devil was attacking my mind all week long to the point, to the point where I was thinking, you know what? What's the sense of this? I said, man, I got all these degrees. I could go teach you to be a professor at a Bible college and have it made. Start singing praises. <laughs> Amen. You know, and I'm thinking, wait, why all this pressure? Why go through all this? Coffee. Huh? The coffee. The coffee, yeah. <laughs> oh, the coffee, yeah. 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 Like Laverne and Shirley, right? Where's the coffee? Where's the coffee? But, uh, you know, I'm thinking, oh, that's, yeah, go ahead, throw those darts, Satan. Throw those arrows. It says, I'm not quitting until I die. I'm going to keep preaching the gospel and pastoring it until I can't physically do it no more. And when I can't physically do it no more, I'll find some way in a wheelchair. I don't care. You've got but, Kathy behind you. Yeah. That's right. Amen. <laughs> so, you know what? Satan will this week try to throw an arrow at you saying, it's not worth it. Just give it up. Don't give it up. Amen. Amen. Great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. Never forget that. Great is your reward in heaven. And so they faithfully proclaim Christ. And sometimes we don't proclaim Christ like we ought to because we're afraid of what the response is going to be. Because believe it or not, we, we do have the fear. We fear men. We really do. Be honest about it. Remember those times where you, you, you know, you think, man, why didn't I say something? It, let's be honest. You just fear. You, 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 didn't want, you were scared. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I've done that. Pastor, but you're a preacher, man. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I've walked by and said, man, why didn't I say something? Why? And I'm thinking, well, you rascal. You were just so afraid of what that person was going to say. You didn't want to hear what he had to say. And I felt, I felt so ashamed. You know, it happens to all of us, right? But you know what the key is? Ha -ha! Next time that happens, <laughs> that guy's going to get three barrels and a shotgun and a, everything like that guy did yesterday. <laughs> you know? But see, Satan tries his very best to get us to stop witnessing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep doing it. Amen? Faithfully proclaim Christ. You know what's interesting? In Acts chapter 28, look at the close of the chapter. In Acts chapter 28, notice here that the book even closes with preaching. In Acts chapter 28, the Apostle Paul is in prison. And in Acts chapter 28, in verse 30, And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. How do you like that? God didn't provide him with a house, and he's a prisoner. <coughs> and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all the confidence, no man what? Forbidding him. Wow. You talk about a demonstration of discipleship. The early church opened up with preaching. The very last chapter closes with proclaiming Christ. Amen? Amen. Faithfully proclaim Christ. In closing, you cannot stop any army of soldiers who cannot be bought, intimidated, or annihilated. The soldiers of Christ will always go forward. Amen? Amen? Listen, may this be the four qualities of Bethlehem Baptist Fellowship this morning. May we always stress Christ. May we always practice evangelism. Always being ready to witness. Always being ready to give out the word that lies within our hearts. Right? Yep, we're going to endure some losses voluntarily and involuntarily. And may we be faithful at proclaiming Christ until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. May that be our goal. Father God, I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the time we could spend in your word. And Father, thank you so much that we have a gospel that the, that the whole world needs to hear. 
And Lord, if you so choose, uh, you know, one day maybe we'll have a land. In